one of the issues you'll have when baking in substance banners, you'll get skewed maps. And uh, so what we're going to do is induce that here on a model. We're going to get started by modeling it in Blender real quick. And then uh, we're going to go over to substance painter, bake it out. You'll see the error, and then we'll go ahead and fix it by using Preto. Now, of course, you can use other programs like Photoshop or whatever would work for you, where you can blend two images together. But in this case, let's just get started here by quickly modeling out a high poly, a very simple object, like this. Do a Boolean. Okay, this object here, we're going to go ahead and give it a bevel. I got the uh, corners here, they're wrong. So we need to change geometry that are tied to arc. That changes. Turn off loop slide as well, makes it a little bit nicer. We could bunk, bump up the segment counts here to uh, whatever we want. Let's say like 18, for example. Uh, you notice how this, the shading looks a little bit weird. Um, you need to shade this auto smooth. So the cutter and the base shape both get shaded auto smooth. Now we get this little artifact. And uh, we can fix this one by adding a weighted normal modifier. And we want to check keep sharp. We're going to add a triangulate modifier, change it to five, keep normals. Okay. And so we still have a little bit of a weird kind of bevel effect here. This is just something that happens in Blender. We go to the uh, profile here. If we change the shape to 0.7, this may end up looking a little bit nicer because what it's done is it's flattened out the edges here quite a bit. Okay, and you do want to triangulate at the end of this and check keep normals. Uh, five is just so that quads remain quads. Um, and then it'll export and import into substance relatively well. All right, and um, yeah, so that's just the high poly. Let's give this the name high. Now I wanted to run through this. Okay, shift D, duplicate this. We're going to get rid of everything except for the weighted normal and the triangulate. And this is going to end up becoming our low. We're going to UV map this. Over to UV editor. I wanted to do this though because I wanted you to see the process of going into Substance Painter, like the full kind of thing here. So we need to unwrap this first of all. So press U, Smart UV Project. Done. Okay. Island margin. You have to give these things a little bit of space between each other. You have some bleed room. Okay. Something like that'll work. And uh, once you've done that, you can actually go back and you can start to export these. So if we select the high, click File, Export, FBX, you want to do the Selected Object, go to the Desktop, create a new folder. Usually you need to create a folder for your projects you're working on. Okay, so let's just say it's a model that we're working on. In here, you might want a couple of folders like textures. You want to create one called Exports, and this can be quite useful because we're going to export. Prefix this as substance. We'll say this is the high. We'll say this is 01, but you could export multiple things. So you could do like a high exploded, for example, or not exploded, and have different little suffixes here. In this case, our suffix is 01, uh, just for now. But uh, we'll go ahead and export this, and that's good to go. The low over here, export this as well. It's an FBX file, same thing. Only difference is it's not a high, so we're going to do low. All right. This is just going to keep things nice, neat, and organized through this process. Uh, there's something else we're going to need out of Blender. So if we go back to the UV editor with the low, uh, you see this here? We're going to go UV, and we are going to um, we are going to export this. Oops, sorry, not here. Export UV layout. Okay, so we're going to do a PNG file, uh, 1024, change the fill opacity to 1. And uh, that should work out for you just fine. And we're going to take this and put it into the model folder, textures. Inside of textures, let's create a new folder. We call this baked maps, okay? And we're just going to throw the UV layout in here. So we'll just name it UV layout, okay? Now let's go to Substance Painter. We'll see the error here firsthand. The file, new. We'll use the Unreal Engine 4 template, change it to 1024, just keep this fast for the video, but you can use whatever you like. It doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, compute tangent space uh, per fragment. Select below, make sure it's selected. Okay, done. 
And so it'll come in like so. So we need to go bake it now. Let's go to edit bake mesh maps. High definition volume or volume meshes. Click here. Uh, we're going to import the high. Change it to 1024. I'm going to put on 2x anti aliasing. Um, we're going to go ahead and bake this. Now, what you want to do is set the resolution you want, absolutely want your mesh to be at. So if you want it to be at 2K, 1K, 4K, 8K, whatever. Um, when you're baking these out, you're going to want these um, to be at their max uh, for use later. Okay. I'm just going to keep it low for the video, but uh, we went ahead and baked this out. And this is what we're going to see over here. Well, first of all, that's an error because um, there's a ray mist thing going on. I need to bump up the max frontal and rear distance and do that again real quick. You'll see it looks more normal here. And all right, so there we go. Now, the issue is if I shift right click, see the normal, kind of like a big section here, no section here. So that's the skew in the, um, the bake. Now, how do you fix that in Substance Painter? Well, you can, but it's kind of lengthy and kind of involved. It's not a, I wouldn't say it's very efficient to do that here in Substance Painter, although you can technically by kind of baking both maps and then re-importing them and then re-exporting them, uh, but it's just inefficient. So what we want to do instead is we're going to go ahead and take these, uh, oh, let me, let's explain this real quick. So what's going on here is that um, every fragment, every pixel, basically, uh, it's kind of averaging across like the whole shape, and so it's they're all shooting out in different directions. It's kind of weird, uh, and that's called uh, average normals, right? We turn that off and we bake again real quick. You'll see that doesn't actually happen or occur, and so now it's perfectly the way we want it, which is nice. Except, yeah, all these are messed up now, right? We have to mix the two normal maps together. That's what's going to happen. And so this is actually quite easy. Uh, you go to your project folder here. We're going to do ambient occlusion, curvature, and normal map. Okay. Seems like a lot of work. It's really not. We'll get through this. So um, right click it, export resource. In this case, we're going to do the AO. We're going to export this to the textures folder, baked maps. And just export it. This one, same thing, export. And then normal map, export it as well. Okay, and if we take a look in that folder, open it up real quick, you'll see they're all right here. All we're going to do with these things is prefix them real quick, and these were non-averaged um, bakes, right? So they don't have non—they don't have average normals. So we're going to give them prefix non-averaged. This is pretty important. You'll see why here in a little bit. But all of this, like so. Okay, we got the UV layout, which is great. Now we got to do that again. So we're going to go ahead and bake mesh maps. We're going to average the normals. Bake. Okay. It's just a second. You could have turned all the other ones off if you wanted to, but pretty fast at this resolution, so it's not a big deal. Uh, so we got to export again to the same folder. The ambient occlusion, curvature, and the normal. And then once again, we come back over here, you'll see these three are just back in here now. Uh, these ones are not prefixed. So let's tag these ones with a prefix of averaged. Put average normals if you really wanted to. But I would just put AVG, keep it simple. Averaged. And the last one's back here for some reason, but that's what it is, okay? So we can open this UV layout. Um, I'm just going to use Krita, open it over there. Now, this is a very important step, it's already open, that we have to do to this image. Now, this is an 8-bit image. You don't have the option to change the bit on the export from uh, Krita. So we have to come in here and go to uh, Properties, Image Color Space. You can see RGB Alpha 8-bit integer. Change it to 16-bit. Okay, pretty important. Click OK. And now you're pretty much set up and good to go here. What we're going to do is go to layer, the import, import layer, and we're going to select all of these. So click, shift, click, and open. It'll come in just like so. You can see how the naming conventions actually help you out here. You can identify these really easily. Three at the bottom, three at the top, exactly what you want. 
Uh, we're going to disable all of these real quick. Turn them off. And we're going to go to the bottom one here. We're going to control click. And when we control click, you can see we get the marching ant selection around it. And what we're going to do is select shrink selection. And shrink this by whatever amount you need. You just want to back it up off the border um, where it will encompass those uh, bevels for the most part. If you have a bunch of different custom bevel sizes, this can be uh, kind of worked out a little bit different manually, or perhaps you might want to use actually like Substance Designer to do things like this. But this is a common technique here. So uh, shrink by whatever size you need. In this case, I'm going to do 10. And we're going to do select. And we're also going to feather the selection. So this will add a little bit of a blur around the edge. And so we can do two or three pixels. We'll do three in this case. Okay. And so we have that selection. Cool. Let's click the plus sign, create a new layer. If you turn that one off, you'll see we still have the marching ants going. And uh, we're going to use the fill bucket. You could pretty much use whatever you want. If you want to use black or white, it doesn't really matter. Uh, just go through and click once. Just make sure um, your opacity is set to 100% here in Krita. Otherwise, you get like a transparent fill, which is probably not what you want. And uh, so we're using this layer to create the masks on the other ones super fast. That's all we're doing. And so uh, we can just leave it enabled for now. Enable the top three real quick. And these ones here, uh, you'll see is that we can actually, uh, you know, make sure you, uh, if you don't have nothing selected, you control click this one again. You'll get the selection. It also includes the feather. So we can click here, add transparency mask, little arrow, right? And then so we can do that super fast. Our selection goes away, control click again. That's why you do that. Now we can add a uh, transparency mask. Click here again, add transparency mask. Oop. It's not gonna let me if I don't have it selected the right way. Huh? Add transparency mask, okay. So you can minimize these as well so they're not so distracting. Because we know we got them mostly set up correctly now, right? And so if we turn all of these off, you can see we can make matching pairs now. So normal map with normal map. And uh, they'll blend together. Simple enough, right? And so um, this is good. You don't necessarily need anything in the background, perhaps. Uh, so what we can do is you can see have all these set up. I want to save this file real quick. So control shift S and it's going to try to save it as a PNG. Let's save a KRA file real quick. Create a document. We'll just say this is the um, skew correction. Create a file, right? Okay. And so we can go through this as well now and start exporting out the actual map. So uh, control shift S again, we'll do the PNG file. And uh, this one, we can say this is um, going to be corrected normal. Okay. I'm going to copy that prefix real quick in case I need to correct to normal. You see, we'd save it like so. Okay, done. Now let's go ahead and do curvature. Do corrected curvature. Do last but not least corrected ambient occlusion. And we're not typing all that for that, right? We'll just type in KO. So you can save all that like so. Go back to Substance Painter. Uh, so let's just go back and make sure uh, we baked last with average normals, which is nice. It's not really a big deal. Uh, our folder here, easiest way to import into uh, Substance is just if you have two monitors, it's nice. Uh, you can see we can find corrected files here. Drag them into your project folder. You'll see here they pop up. Hold shift, click, select texture. Now we can go to import resources to the project. Okay. Go ahead and um, import those. There we go. They're all right there, ready to go. So we can go to our texture sets. You'll see that we're not going to use the original normal ambient occlusion or curvature. And so um, what we can do is now replace them.
So here's ambient occlusion. Here's our uh, curvature. Here's our normal map. All right, and you can see just like that, everything else should be fine since we already baked it with the average normals on. They don't really have a big issue with this problem. So um, now, you know, it's all corrected and it looks pretty good. Cool. A little bit of a process. I would go ahead and just save at this point my substance file. So model folder, textures. Or you could just say it's like the uh, substance corrected base or something. I don't know. Name it whatever you want. And so we, you can remember what it is. And then uh, you'll always be able to get back to this point real quick. And I have to go through the whole process again. So now you're pretty much set up and ready to go. And you could start using uh, different materials on it to uh, drop on it real quick. And just a side note, these little edges like this that were marked sharp with seams and all that. Uh, you won't be able to get rid of that little square effect, just so you know. It's gonna it's always gonna remain there for the most part. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's the whole process for the most part to set up something like this. It should save you a lot of headaches in the future. Now, of course, Marmoset is really good for baking uh, and doing skew correction. Of course, Substance Designer can also do skew correction over there with a uh, basically just the mask you'd have to import. Uh, so these masks that we were creating here at the very start, this thing, this one, um, we'd import a black and white mask into designer baker over there. You would end up with something like this, perhaps, right? Or vice versa. I forgot if you got to invert it or not. But anyways, that's really it for this video. So now you'll be able to handle this if it's ever thrown at you. Quite easy with Krita, in my opinion. Uh, it's way simpler than trying to do it in Substance Painter. So um, go ahead and make it uh, take advantage of the um, external software there. Save you a little bit of a headache anyways. So hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll check you guys out in the next one. All right, take care.